Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about the telescope resolution. What does that mean? Well, every telescope has the ability to resolve small details on things far away. Let's say you want to look at the craters on the moon, you take a telescope, you point at the moon, and you begin to see the fine little detail you cannot see with the naked eye. But how do we determine what that resolution is? Essentially, it's the resolution angle, the angular size of the object you can actually discern through a telescope. Well, there's a rule of thumb. The rule of thumb is that to find the resolution angle, that of course would be in arc seconds. And did I write that down? No, no, I need to write that down. In arc seconds. Because in astronomy, looking through telescopes, Sizes are typically expressed in terms of arc seconds, unless they're really big, like the moon, it's expressed in arc minutes. But for very small objects, stars and nebulas far away, the size of them is typically expressed in terms of arc seconds, seconds of arc. And of course, one second of arc is one three thousand six hundred of a degree. I may want to write that down. So one arc second, which can be written as one with the two little hash marks like that, that's an arc second, is equal to one over 3,600 of a degree. So, one thirty-six hundred of a degree is equal to an arc second, so that's a very tiny little angle. And an arc minute is one sixtieth of a degree. You can kind of see the connection between seconds and hours and minutes and hours. There's 60 minutes in an hour, there's 3,600 seconds in an hour, and so one arc second, there's 3,600 arc seconds in a degree and 60 arc minutes in a degree as well. So if you want to express the angular resolution of a telescope, the rule of thumb tells us that to find the angle in arc seconds, you take 4.56 and divide by the diameter in inches of the objective lens or objective mirror. In centimeters, it would be 11.58 divided by the diameter in centimeters or 0 0.1158 divided by the diameter in meters. For example, if we take the Hubble telescope that has a diameter uh, of the objective mirror of 2.4 meters, we take 0 0.1158 divided by 2.4, and you can see that the resolution is about 0 0.0448 arc seconds, essentially 1 20th of an arc second. That's absolutely amazing. But the reason why we want the telescope up in space is because we don't want to battle the conditions of the atmosphere. Notice that under excellent seeing conditions, the best you can do with a telescope on Earth is 0.4 arc seconds. So, since the Hubble telescope can al almost do 10 times as good, it wouldn't you do any good if you have a mirror like that on the Earth because the atmosphere would limit your ability and that's why we put the Hubble Space Telescope in space. For good seeing conditions, it goes down to one arc second, and for poor seeing conditions, two to three arc seconds. So you can see that really big telescopes don't have a chance on the Earth's surface because of the atmospheric conditions. Now, of course, we have some technologies to get around that. To improve picture quality, we have what we call adaptive optics, optics that can be adapted instantaneously using computer control and image processing to process the image afterwards to make it clear again after it's all been jumbled up by the atmosphere. We can also, of course, also use the equation that the, the angle of resolution is equal to 1.22 times the wavelength of the light used divided by the diameter of the, um, of the objective lens. Now, of course, what wavelength do we use? Because we see all kinds of different wavelengths. For a typical wavelength of 500 nanometers, 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, and using the Hubble Space Telescope again, notice we first get the result in radians, then we convert from radians to degrees, then we convert from degrees to arc seconds, and we get 0.052, which is very close to the number we got with the rule of thumb. So you can see the rule of thumb is fairly good, but of course it depends upon what kind of light we're looking at, and it does make a little bit of a difference. But you can see, again, rule of thumb, or using the actual equation, you get numbers that are very uh, indicative of how well that telescope can do. Now notice that in the future they're planning on building telescopes on the Earth's surface with a diameter of 30 meters. That's like 100 feet across. Of course, you get tremendous resolution if it wasn't for the atmosphere. So we really are going to have to depend on these kind of techniques to get rid of all that blurring caused by the atmosphere to get full advantage out of these huge telescopes with enormous diameters, because as the diameter increases, you get enormous angular resolution. 
We want that so we are able to see that tremendous detail we're after. And that is how it's done. Okay, I have one more 